Hi. So, a little bit of a different tone today. Before we just really get into this video, I want to start off with a trigger warning. Something that I've never had to do before. This video, we will be discussing topics such as pedophilia, sexual harassment, and um, stuff of that nature. If these are topics that genuinely upset you or even can be triggering towards you, I would recommend clicking on this video right now. This is not my normal kind of content, but this is a video that needs to be made. Now, in some of these cases, you're going to hear me use the word allegedly. Please note that I am not discrediting any of the victims, the victim stories, or any of these situations. I'm using the word allegedly for legality reasons and re legality reasons only. Because I do believe the victims. But we live in a world where if we don't say the word allegedly, that little tiny word, you can be sued. So, if you are unaware, there was a video that was released yesterday, I think, titled Predators of the Night. And it was made by a community member known as Will Loves Halloween. In this video, um, no, it's kind of like a rap, you know, type of deal. There are some very serious undertones in it. And it talks about some people in the community who, for the most part, are pretty well known. Some of them less than others. And these are stories and scenarios that are important to talk about and really shouldn't be tiptoed around anymore. And I honestly applaud Willow for being the one to step up, rip off the band-aid, and talk about it. Some of these people other community members have tried to talk about in the past and... They've been silenced, or they've been intimidated, and I think Willow has opened the door for some of us to come out and talk about these uh, uncomfortable people. So I'm going to read off some of these lyrics and give some context behind them, and again... I will be using the word allegedly for legality reasons. So let's start with the first major uh, part here. Jordan Hayde don't want someone close to his age. He likes them preteens 12 in a week. Now, if you don't know who Jordan is, Jordan is a very popular, Jimmy oriented YouTuber known as Joe Bean Videos. He was no, most notably known for being a community member on GMA, also known as Jimmy Master and Matronics, another huge channel. And he, honestly, he always made a lot of people feel uncomfortable, but, you know, it wasn't really talked about a whole lot. He was also a person who... A lot of people grew up around and, you know, I mean, he's been around forever. He's kind of like the haunt former of a Jimmy community. Not to, like, stop on haunt former's name, but, like, that's the relevancy he had. Recently, this is actually the most recent situation, some screenshots came out of him allegedly, again, we have, we have to use these words for legal reasons. Allegedly discussing how he had sexual feelings towards minors. How he allegedly had uh, CP. I'm sure some of you can infer what that stands for. Saved on his phone. How he enjoyed CP, allegedly. How he was aroused by CP, allegedly. 
and how he, he knew all of these things were wrong and was going to seek help. Now, obviously, he's still very active online. That's not alleged. We've all seen it. So this whole thing about him, you know, going to get help, I don't fully believe it. Allegedly, according to some people who were close to him, this is a known thing, and he has said this on numerous occasions. Additionally, I have talked to different people who were close to Jordan, and he had allegedly been on calls in his underwear, with only minors present. Yikes. He had allegedly exposed minors to pornographic content, mainly fetish material, um, fart, and I believe scat fetish um, material on a private Discord server. Now, this private Discord server is real. I have seen it for myself. Um, and this private Discord server was made up of mostly minors. And I do believe that uh, Jordan himself created this server. Now, Jordan is, I think, in his mid-20s, maybe early 30s. And he's always hanging around children. I also, under, to my understanding, he allegedly, allegedly shared a bed with a minor at tran this past trans world, so that would be in February. Again, you were like, you're, you're, you're a proper adult, so if, if that is legitimately true, that is disturbing. I mean, all of this is disturbing. Uh, honestly, it's kind of heartbreaking, and even seeing the years I mean, there are people who are adults now who claim that he has done things to them. He has said uncomfortable things to them. He's put them in uncomfortable situations. Now, I cannot speak for all of the victims involved. I was never close to Jordan. I never liked Jordan, to be honest with you. He always creeped me out, and he was acting really weirdly at Trans World. And, you know, having his camera and people's faces that didn't want to be filmed, so, you know, I, n I never really had a positive interpretation of him to begin with, but you know, these stories and scenarios that I'm hearing of and have heard of are rancid. Now, this next uh, piece, again, um... These are going to get uncomfortable, so bear with me here. Anthony Gulish, he likes them under 17. Real name, Michael Gee. His record's not so clean. Groomed a 16-year-old while he looks 53. Pushing 40 like his hairline, he don't got no green. Fran, I feel like I'm super white reading it like that, because this is like a rap. So, Anthony Gulish. The... Now, former flagship manager who had allegedly groomed a 16-year-old minor. Now, I don't... I, I do know there was stuff going on with Anthony. I've known for a while. I just never knew what. Because someone who I know said that there was something going on with um, corporate. They're asking employees, hey, you know, da 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 da, basically. So, some of us already knew that there was something going on with Anthony, but we we didn't really say anything because a it was like a investigation type of thing, looking into misconduct allegations. And now, to my understanding, he was fired. And I guess he was allegedly um, blacklisted and trespassed from flagship property. I don't know if that also goes for all spirit properties, but I do know at least flagship property. Now, as for the victim in this situation... 
it's not known who it is. And I'm going to be honest here. We are not owed that information. I don't think we need to know who that individual is. That is something that they they should come forward when they feel comfortable. And that should be something that they should be able to speak of. But I just want to say to that person, if you are seeing this, for one, I'm horribly sorry that someone with so much influence groomed you and took advantage of you like that. You did the right thing by speaking out against it. And I am proud of you for doing that because I know it's not an easy thing to do. Just know that I support you. Many others support you. If you ever need someone to talk to who is also a victim of grooming and sexual harassment, I am always here to talk privately. And again, I support you. Many others support you. And I hope you are genuinely doing okay, both mentally and physically. Again, it is getting a little uncomfortable. All right, next part. Mr. Holiday, real name Garrison. I could go in all day. Asking 11-year-olds for moaning clips, not okay. Obviously, um, clipped out the doxing part. Because, um, like, I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I was just doxed by fucking Halloween C. I really don't like doxing that much i mean i get it here because like there's some raw emotions going on but i'm not gonna further that so mr holiday known as garrison is another jimmy collector and prototype collector and is someone who is mostly associated with morris costumes to my understanding now garrison um allegedly reached out to multiple minors and had asked them to send audio clips of them moaning as this um you know refers to he also allegedly flirted with minors and kind of tried to tiptoe around like calling them attractive and cute and stuff like that which now, he has done around me personally. No, I'm not a minor. He didn't do this when I was a minor, so I have lots of an issue with it. But this is a pattern of behavior that he has done allegedly around minors as well. Now, I do know that he goes to people and tries to state that everyone is against him and that the whole community is trying to take him down, which seems like very manipulative behavior if you ask me. Because he does try very hard to recruit other people against the victims. And again, I mean, that has happened around me. And he has tried to subtly turn me around against the victims that have spoke out against him. There is an actual page that documents all of the um, like accusations and screenshots on Instagram. So the anti-garrison page or something like that and again like the amount of like victims in this situation is absolutely insane i think this is another person who is just he's been around for so long and needed to be put in put in check all right, so another part is Banshee fucking screams. Yeah, he is my biggest fan, probably because I'm underage. Asking where's the only fans? His beats are mixed like shit. Yeah, he doesn't understand. Mixing is what he do. Mixing is what he wants to do to minors. That is his plan. Now, I'm familiar with Banshee screams on Instagram. I've been in group chats with him, and know a lot of people have been calling him a pedo and all that shit. And to be quite honest, I really don't know the full story behind Banshee Screams. And again, sounds like there's multiple people because I asked a couple of um, friends of mine who are more familiar with situations like these than I am. And one of them said to ask 
a particular haunter, which, I, I mean, I didn't do that, because it was just, uh, I didn't want to, like, Chris Hansen them. And another one sent me a screenshot of Banshee making vulgar and sexual remarks towards what was allegedly a freshman. Now, if you are not in the United States, a freshman age would be a minor. So, and I believe, well, no, I don't believe, like, he, he is, like, an adult. So, um, gross. And, I mean, it, it was pretty vulgar what he was saying in response to, like, this picture of a random dude. So this one, this next one does hit a little close to home because this is one of the first people that I interacted with. This is someone that was close to a lot of, lot of people. And I honestly didn't know about the situation until recently when I spoke to a couple of friends. Asked, hey, what's going on? What are these allegations? Like, this doesn't sound like him. And they're all like, no, this is true. And I believe it is Veblen posted an actual video um, docu like, docu documenting this. My brain's, like, super slow. I'm so sorry. And, yeah. Lil Roll Roll. Don't think we forgot about Abby. Yeah, we get to laugh him. 15 and 18. That's wrong. Stop the cap'n. Now, obviously, I'm cutting parts out to, like, get to, like, the relevant parts. So, Lil Roll Roll is something I've known for a while. Um, bro, I've known Roland for years. So, and I always thought that Roland was a stand-up guy. I, I did, you know. I kind of fall into those people who were close to some of these other people and are blindsided. I, I was. I guess 2020, I think, if I'm correct. Someone please, obviously if I get anything wrong, clarify. Or if there's more information, add on to it in the comments below. Respectfully, please. Um, he was 18 at the time. Dating a 15-year-old girl named Abby. Uh, that is the fullest extent that I know of it, but that is still wrong. That is still, uh, I mean, morally wrong. It's still creepy because, you know, you are an adult. And it's honestly heartbreaking to hear that someone who, you know, I, I, I used to look up to is... A creep. Yeah, I mean that that's honestly like crushing to say. Alright. Nick fucking Bell with your almost unibrow. brown. It's been six years since you've been since you've been around. But I don't forget I always make a sound. Asking kids to move from mouths, he's in your town. Nick Bell is an older name who I honestly like, that's something that's, like, in the deepest recesses of my head. Because when he was relevant, that's when I just came into the community. 2016, 2017 era. That's when, like, I was 15. 14, 15. So, I believe. I could be, like, on crack. I, I suck at math. Um, so, I asked somebody who had been directly affected by Nick. And this is what they had to say. Nick Bell was a haunter in his 20s who used to message children, asking them to do, quote, tasks that get progressively weirder and uncomfortable. He asked me to move my prop's mouth, and then I got weird after that, and I blocked him. So that's the extent of that situation that I know of, I guess he deleted his Instagram and just kind of skipped town. So, I am assuming that there was more that was going on. But, again, that's all that I know of. That's a situation where I just really wasn't um, present. If any of you actually know more about the whole Nick Bell thing, comment down below. Because I'm honestly really curious, and I know some newer people in the community might also want to know, because this is, I mean, 
this is a really long time ago. So again, this is this next one is another person I used to know, um, and again, it's a little sad to basically see that they are a creepy, disgusting person. Clowns wanted CEO ass on the block. Real name of Zuza. We're going to pull. Up, we're going. Up, I swear to God. We gonna pull up to your spot, draw on porn of minor props. Where do we start? Here at Hustle Ophelia, that's just a little part. I don't really know what else to say besides, like, that's it, you, immorally wrong. I mean, drawing NSFW material of props in general is such a weird and taboo thing to do. I don't really support it because I think it's, uh, Yikes! Like that's a yikes on trikes situation, and yes, I'm sprinkling a little humor in here because it, it. This is like, these are discussions that make me uncomfortable, and I the humor is how I cope. So I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but like, what the fuck? Like I I, I don't know what else to say besides what the fuck? Did I just read Harriet Hustle Ophelia? Um, no. That that those are like little kids. I think like Ophelia has to be like a prepubescent girl. Here at Hustle also. I don't really remember how Clownzoid was. I know he was not prepubescent. Um, I think this is like the light, the lightest part, the lightest situation. And this is even still like really fucking disgusting and disturbing. I. That's, okay. Moving on. Now. This next person, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. This one hits pretty hard. I have to dis I have to just disconnect myself here with you guys. I'm going to be super honest with you. And I have to just clear my head. I have to just stay calm and collected. This next person is someone who victimized me personally. So... This is like my second take of this, because the last one I just started screaming and getting so angry and emotional, and I, I just, I don't, I don't want to see you guys, I, I, I don't want you guys to see me like that. So, I'm going to read this off, and then we're going to talk about it. Cameron fucking John, yeah, he's the most famed. Red Rocket, Red Rocket, he's just a lame. Getting his homophobic mom to fight his game. Fuck Stacy should have shoved him where he came. Now, let, let's address the elephant in the room. I was Cameron John's boyfriend years ago. If you didn't know, I'm gay. Um, and not like that's a big deal or anything, but I, I dated or I had an online relationship with Cameron John. I was a huge fan of Cameron, honestly. And Cameron was really interested in his fans, I'll be honest with you, and other male haunters, including um, some other like really big names, who, again, I feel like they should be able to come out and talk about it themselves. But... I mean, he, we flirted a bit, and Cameron, Cameron groomed me. Cameron groomed me and made me feel like I was in a, a legitimate relationship with him, even though it wasn't. It was, I, I was nothing more but a sexual object to him. And he treated a lot of other people like that as well. It wasn't just me. So I, I, I don't want to make it all about me, obviously. But, like, you know, I, I want to talk about this. Cameron... Cameron was very aggressively sexual around me. And if I didn't reciprocate, he'd block me. Or he would get upset, Right? And, I mean, it was always on his schedule. Because, of course, you know, I was a hormonal teenager. So, of course, I reciprocated. And, again, I, I thought this was love. And I thought this was a relationship. And, I mean, Cameron... 
flaunted its fame around me and really made it seem like I was special because he was a famous YouTuber. Because he was friends with Britty44. You know, it's stuff like that. He went to flagship with, and, you know, stuff like that. And I, I idolized him. I, I dated him for, uh, uh, well, not dated, but I was in relationships with him on and off for a couple of years. And, I mean, there really weren't any highs, but there were some lows. And those lows were pretty bad. And it wasn't only that, but he allegedly sexually harassed a bunch of other male, mainly queer haunters, and would allegedly send them unsolicited dick pics, which is where the red rocket joke comes from, because it is red. And at one point... When he was an adult, he was either 18 or 19, he messaged a newer queer haunter who at the time was 13 years old. And this is a while ago. And was flirting with them and I think was trying to get nudes and was very quickly called out. Another YouTuber posted a video about him, had screenshots and everything, and I'm sure a lot of you remember this. And what, the video was quickly taken down because behind the scenes, uh, now this isn't a legend, Stacy, uh, Cameron's mother, messaged him, and he was, the, the uploader was a minor, so I want you to remember this. The uploader was a minor, and she messaged other minors threatening them, um, was using very aggressive homophobic language you know it wasn't just the f slur i mean these were like very she was aggressive telling them to kill themselves telling them they should be shot telling them they should be killed i mean essentially making death threats towards minors that's a serious crime stacy she also sent the uploader a handwritten forged cease and desist which i do believe that is illegal to do as well and, I mean, actual adult, adult haunters who, you know, are, like, normal, respectable people, you know, like the Psychotic Circus of Savannah, for example, a normal, respectable adult who, you know, you can go to to talk about, you know, stuff like, hey, is this, like, an actual cease and desist? No, that's weird. You know, stuff like that. Um, someone actually went to him and he pointed out, like, hey, that's weird. No. Not trying to drag him into drama. I mean, this is, you know, older, but I, I trust Savannah. You know, he's a proper adult with proper adult experiences. He's got a wife and kids. I'm going to trust him, obviously. And he's actually a stand-up guy. So, I mean, some red flags. Stacy was also claiming to be a undercover detective for the U U -Nork, New York Police Department. And was claiming to get the addresses of children. Now, actually, the funny thing is, is that I had messaged her and I had grilled her for her badge and her badge number. And she kept saying, oh, get on call. Get on call with me. You know, I want to voice, I want to voice call you. I want to FaceTime you. No. <laughs> no. Um, now, I did actually contact the police about Stacy and obviously nothing happened. I don't know if other people did. I believe the 13-year-old she... Or not she, but Cameron had allegedly reached out to. I do believe their parents also contacted the police about the, uh, the situation as well. But, I mean, there's... Cameron John has such a long, messed up history of allegedly... And again... I hate having to say allegedly because, like, some of these, there's proof, but, like, you know, for legality reasons, you, you have to be careful. You know, he allegedly harassed people who I'm close with and who I love and care about so much. So, you know, it's, it's hard. 
um, not only just really being able to sit down here and talk about it, but just not getting so angry and letting my emotions take the wheel. Whew, fuck. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Um, that's as much as I'm going to talk about um, Cameron John because it's just a lot. Um, obviously, Stream Predator of the Night by Willow Lowe's Halloween. I, I, I will have it linked down below. I think, A, I mean, get that shit boosted. Share it. I mean, share it with your grandma. Don't really, I don't think grandma would understand that. I don't think she can handle that. But, like, share it with other haunters. Spread awareness. And also just bop to the shit. Because, I mean, it does go hard. And also, Willow, thank you once again for being the one to say something publicly again. And not being afraid. Because I know there have been people who have been absolutely just intimidated and no hate towards them because I get how terrifying that is. And to those people who have been intimidated, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the, that you had to go through that stress and that trauma. And to all the victims out there, I hope you're doing well. I hope that mentally and physically you're doing okay. I love and care about each and every last one of you. And I hope you all are taking care of yourselves. Drink water. Um, there are some resources to help you guys. I mean, there's only so much to know that we all on the internet can do for you. But we all do have your back. We all care about you guys a lot. We are a community. And community members have each other's back. Right? Right, guys? Like, I'm saying like, you guys are here with me, but we all have each other's back. Through thick and thin. So everyone, be nice to each other. Tell your best friend, the Hunter or Jeremy community that, hey, I appreciate you, dude. You're awesome. Spread love. Not creepy love, but just love to everyone. Don't be a creeper. Don't do nasty things to people. From the words of James A. Janice, one of my favorite YouTubers, be good people. That's all from you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.